Good evening, Word of Life. Woo! Good to see you all tonight. Welcome, everyone, to Word of Life Worship Center. I'm Pastor Kim. Those of you that are here, those that are maybe watching online and those that are on their way, we welcome you. And we're here another Wednesday night getting our B12 shot, right? Getting our energy and boost and faith that we need to keep on going, but not just keep going, but to have victory in everything we do in Jesus' name, right? So let's go ahead and um, we're going to just have a moment of prayer and then we'll proceed on with service. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you for the opportunity to be here, Lord God. I pray that you would prepare our hearts, Lord, that the word that's coming forth would be sown into good ground and that we would hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord God. I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are El Roy, the all-seeing God. And we lift up all those that are dealing with um, the hurricanes and threats and weather patterns that are kind of awry right now, Lord God. And we just ask you to take over. And we just say, peace be still to all of those places, Florida and all the other places that are affected. Anyone that has family, um, we just put that out there, Lord God. And also, I just want to lift up Pastor Troy to you. I pray that um, you would bless him, Lord God, to bring the word uh, through him, bring a rhema word, Lord God, and that um, he would continue to be encouraged and press on and, and allow your anointing to keep meeting him here every time he gives a word, Lord God. So we just thank you for that. Um, I just ask this all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, we're going to, I'll just go over the order of service and then um, we'll proceed on with offering. But right now I'm just uh, saying some of the things that we do um, in the month. So we know that every first and third Tuesday we have our men's roundtable with Pastor Troy. Amen. And they already completed uh, for the month of September. Uh, so they will be having um, their meetings in October, which will be Tuesday, October 4th, and Tuesday, October 18th are the first and third Tuesdays of October. And then the women, we have our, uh, we meet on our third Saturday at 10 a.m. And that'll be um, Saturday, October 15th for tea time with myself and you all, right? Let's clap it up, ladies. We got ladies in the house. Ladies are dominating tonight. Hello. <laughs> Better recognize, I need to hear you, ladies. Ladies, no. <laughs> anyway, um, so with that, that's all the announcements that I have. Uh, so we're just going to keep on moving on here and get prepared for offering. So let's get our Bibles out so we can say our Bible declaration. Amen. All right, this is my Bible. It's God's word to me. I believe every word. I claim every promise. I'm healed. I'm delivered, and I'm set free because of God's word. Amen. All right, so we're looking at Luke 638 in the King James Version, which is one of my favorite scriptures, um, which I always say. Um, but it says, let's see, behold, wait a minute, Luke 638, that's 1019. This is good too, but that's all right. We have power to be givers in Jesus' name, right? Amen. And we know that when we give, we are doing what Jesus did, because he's very, and does, he's very generous and gave his life for us. Amen. All right, Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And so um, the world would call that karma, but this is seed time and harvest. But then you have the God factor. So you have God is the multiplier. So he multiplies what you give. And um, I know that there was a pastor that was saying, if, you know, if we really believe this, we would be giving all the time because he says, God says he's going to use other men to give into our bosom, it's going to be greater, you know, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I always use the coffee ground example. If you have a canister of, of coffee ground, which I don't think anyone, they either 
you know, we're, we're more, uh, we're fancier now, so we have beans that can be, you know, they are grinded in our, in our ground, however you say that, in your coffee pot, or you have the coffee, the pods. But anyway, whether it's coffee grounds or flour or sugar or whatever, you know, you can fill it up and then you can shake it and it levels off and you can fit more in there. And so um, that's how God wants us to be and, and he promises to, you know, replenish and do even exceedingly abundantly above. So with that, if you have your tither offering, let's hold it and believe God that he's going to do just that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you for this opportunity to give, Lord God. I just decree and declare whatever we are giving tonight, Lord God, uh, if it's a tithe or if it's an offering, that it would be uh, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Lord God, that you would bless it, that we would notice um, a direct connection between our giving and our prosperity, um, not only in our finances, but in our lives in general. And I just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. I ask you to take these tithes and offerings, that you would break them and multiply them for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lucy neighbor say, I'm, I'm happy today. Amen. I mean, this, you know, I'm saying God is good, right? All the time. I'm sure he's done something wonderful for you today or uh, someone you know or something like that. But we don't have to look far to find his hand. Amen? Amen. We don't have to look very far at all to see God's hand moving. And just always be mindful of that. In the midst of uh, adversity and things going on in the world, God is always doing something good. Amen. And so it's just, will there be a people that are looking out for that? You know, I, I want to pray for others, but man, I want to look and see what God is doing that's amazing. And that's because that's going to give me the encouragement that I need, amen? amen, to continue on. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to welcome everybody out here uh, on a Wednesday night. We welcome you here and we welcome you online. We're excited that we get to come together and God has blessed us. And um, I'm always thankful for God's provision. Just, you know, simple stuff that people don't have, you know, like a building, uh, the ability to you know, have even um, live sermons and all this type of stuff that so many people don't have. So we're thankful that we are able to utilize these tools and things like that. I want to start out um, praying for some families, you know, because we got this hurricane. Um, I think it's Ian, right? Hurricane Ian. Uh, and that's been, you know, really just ripping through central Florida area. So uh, we want to just believe God to comfort those that are impacted. Uh, some of them have already lost a great deal. Um, and so, Anika, you have a family that you know out there. Uh, it's the Dell family. I want to pray for them. My mom has a friend in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, Myra has family in Florida. Uh, Brother Rubens, uh, supervisor in Gainesville, Florida. And so, you know, there's, there's uh, so many people. And uh, Brother Eric has some family in Florida. Hey, well, you know what? We might not be in Florida, but we know how to dispatch angels to Florida. Amen. And we know how to pray 
Yeah. I know, and uh, Pam, uh, my, my uh, boss is, my old boss had passed away, but I know they, I don't know, I think they're in Fort Myers, so I don't, I don't know. They did? Okay, I'm going to have to check on her. So anyway, let's, let's pray. I mean, uh, we're going to get into some stuff tonight, but, you know, we're in the earth for such a time as this. And so these are not things that are to bring fear to the believer. These are things that are to bring encouragement to us. And it might sound strange. How can that be encouraging? Because we get to take a stand for Jesus. Amen. We get the opportunity to stand in the midst of adversity and back some stuff up. Amen. And so let's pray. Let's intercede for all those impacted in Florida right now. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus that you've given us power, Lord, power to stand against the wiles of the devil. We bind all these weather patterns and all these crazy storms. We bind that hurricane in and we command it to go back out into the sea and all the harm that is done, that there would be quick recoveries happening for people. We're asking for miracles, Lord. There are people that have lost everything around them. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you show yourself strong, Lord. I pray, Lord, that there would be believers rising up even in this time, even pointing at that storm, even speaking to that storm. And we know that storm shall not prevail because I know there's a lot of believers in Florida, Lord. And so we just plead the blood of Jesus over that entire state right now. We just ask that your power prevail. Jesus, you spoke to the storm and you said, peace be still. And so we speak to this Hurricane Ian and we command you, peace be still in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, let there be hope springing forth. Send ministering angels right now. There are many that are going to be depressed and, and down because of all of this. Well, I ask, Lord, that you supernaturally comfort them. Show yourself strong. Let there be light. Let there be beacons of hope springing up all over the state of Florida. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you that we can pray in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Then suddenly... God could turn it around just like that. Then suddenly. Amen. And so let's just be a people that are always mindful of the stance that we take. And so when, yes, we know that there are going to be things going on, but we don't allow those things to instill fear or hopelessness in us. Amen. We speak and we stand strong and we thank God that he's blessed us to be in a position to speak out. Uh, we're not in the situation that they're in. Well, I think that people that are not dealing with that, they should really be willing to carry some of the weight of some, some of the stuff that people are going through. Because it's, it's a little harder for them to, you know, stand firm and do all these things, but we can. And really, we have no excuse for not doing it. Amen. So thank you guys for joining with me in that prayer. And, and we just want to con continue to believe God. Amen. And, and I want to pray a prayer of healing just for, I know i got some families that are experiencing that and loved ones and stuff like that. So let me just release a healing prayer right now. Father, I just pray for healing, all of those battling sickness and disease. We come against it. We stand against it according to the power of your truth. We stand against all sickness and all disease and we command it to bow to the name of Jesus. And we speak life from this pulpit that there will be healings manifesting. There will be doctor's reports changing. There will be all kinds of things manifesting because of your goodness. Every sickness that has a name, cancer, we command you to bow to the name of Jesus. Heart disease, we command you to bow to the name of Jesus. And any other infirmity, we command you to bow to the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for life and that more abundantly. And that's what we stand for tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So um, it's for such a time as this, you know, that you even know some of the stuff that you know now. You know, maybe you didn't know these things before, but I'm going to tell you and I'm going to keep on preaching this because it's not just your own family that needs your power. The world needs your power. Yeah. Amen. It, it's not just. Your family. It's not now Psalm 91 is, is wonderful and we, we claim that in this church, 
but it goes beyond just your family. If your family is fine, praise God for that. Thank him that you're able to lay down and be in peace in your home and all that. But don't let your power just be put on the shelf. Use that power to help some other families. Amen. And, and stand in the gap for some people. Praise God. Amen. Well, uh, with all that being said, I don't think I got anything else um, that I need to get into other than the word. So you ready over there? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to shout this hallelujah. Send it around the world. You ready? All right. Uh, let's shout hallelujah. Let's do it together. And let's do it on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Man, clap for the Lord. I'm telling you. I mean, I believe on Wednesdays, man, that the angels come with you guys. You know what I mean? Because I, it sound like, you know, sound like we pretty packed out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, y'all doing it. So that's some, we got some angels with us too now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so um, I started this series, and I'm going to pray in a moment, but I started this series entitled Authority. And how fitting that, you know, we're getting into some of this right now because we need to be able to exercise the authority that's been given to us by God. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. I thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. All right. So um, we're going to preach authority part two. Authority part two. And, um, you know, authority, as we defined it last week, authority, this is the power to determine, adjudicate, or otherwise settle disputes. And it's also dealing with jurisdiction. How many know we covered that last week, but our jurisdiction is planet Earth. And so if it's anywhere on planet Earth, come on somebody, it's my business. All y'all can. See, see, the enemy wants you to mind your own business. You say, well, where is it happening at? Oh, that's on planet Earth. So guess what? That's my business. Amen. And so we've got jurisdiction. And then we have the right. Look at your name and say, I got a right. Okay, so some people just butt in the stuff. Amen, come on. And you know what I mean? You don't really like those people. They're just always butting in and, you know what I'm saying? And we used to call it dipping in the Kool-Aid. Amen, come on, get up out the Kool-Aid, man. You're just all up in here. Well, but for us, as citizens of the kingdom, we have the right to control or determine. And so... Now, I'm going to show you with the word, but you got to you got to receive this. Like I got a right to control or determine. Um, and now we've been given a delegated authority from Jesus for what? Such a time as this. We've been given a delegated authority from Jesus. And so let's just practice this. Somebody asked you, where'd you get your power? Huh? Who told you you can do that? Now, you, you got to be confident with this, you know, because when you start walking out there doing some stuff, remember, that's what the disciples, they had problems, right? Because they were trying to question in Acts chapter three when they, you know, what caused that man to to get up, you know, that man that was uh, at the gate called beautiful and he, he was paralyzed and all that. But he got commanded to get up. Well, they didn't care, the, the, the Pharisees and all the religious folks, they didn't care about the fact that, hey, this was a miracle. This guy had been crippled for his whole life. They didn't care about that. What did they want to know? How'd you do that? What, by what power, you know what I'm saying? By what power did you do that? You know, and, and, and it starts to get into it in Acts chapter 4, but Peter made it clear. He made it clear to him. It's in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It's the authority vested in the name of Jesus. That, that man got up. Well, man, so when you start to understand this, how many of y'all ready to do some things? Don't be scared of this stuff, though. 
Not a lot of people are teaching this, but I am. Amen. Maybe everybody ain't teaching it, but you ain't everywhere. You here. So you learning something. Amen. And so we have been given a delegated authority from Jesus for such a time as this. Now, let's look at Luke 10, 19. We looked at it. We'll look at it again tonight as we get started. Luke 10, 19. He says, behold, I give unto you what? Power. And so that word power comes from the Greek word uh, dunamis, also exousia. So it's power and authority. How many know you can't just have power? You got to have authority. You got to have permission to exercise that authority. Amen. Come on. You could be a bodyguard that is a uh, man, whatever, the seventh degree black belt. But until you get the green light, come on, y'all. Uh, you ready? To, you know, you, you're a bodyguard doing your job. And you got a seventh degree black button. You ready to get it in. Yeah. But if you get it in at, at your go, you might get fired. Right. Yeah. Amen. But if you get the green light. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, Y'all in here with me. Yeah. That, that makes me think of when my pastor was going. I think they was coming back from Fiji or either going to Fiji. And some man, you know, decided as the plane was ascending, he decided he going to jump up. And he's going to go off and, and, you know, he's ready to go kill the pilot and he's just ready to take over the whole thing. I mean, no, they did not wait for the air marshals. <laughs> oh, no, man. My pastor had some guys with him and they looked at him. All they needed from him was a green light. Come on, somebody. All they needed was a green light. And he gave them the green light. Man, they must have hemmed that dude up so fast. He, that, that, that brother wished that it would have been some air traffic control instead of them. And they must have tied him up and put, shoved him in a coat closet somewhere. <laughs> I said, man, but all they needed, green light. Amen. And so they had, how many know they had the power? See, that, that's, you know, those were some strong brothers. He had a lot of those Samoan guys with him. But they had the power, but they needed the authority. They need to be released. Amen. And so they, you know, they did that. And uh, I remember another time they told me about a guy was causing problems for the old church. All they needed. Is that light green? It's green. Man must have brother Lawrence back then must have tied this man up, like put him in a some type of chicken wing or something. He would this man was just wishing that he was not there at that moment. <laughs> Well, if you got the power, now you need the authority. And so, and that's what he's saying. Behold, I've given you power. Well, and that word power is like I told you, deutimus and exousia. So it's, it's the force, the capacity, but also the authority to exercise and use it. Amen. And so um, it's just like, you know, we, not to belabor this, but we got to, Understand this, because I want you guys going around here so confident, man. We're about to change things. You, some of y'all just going to be so bold with this thing, man. The devil won't even stop by your house. Oh, come on. He don't. Oh, come on. The devil don't even want to fly over your house. See, some you got it, man. But see, but, but if you don't know this, you know what I'm saying? It's not that you are, you know, powerful. No, you are powerful and you're authorized. Ooh, that's man, that's some mean right there. That, that, you're powerful and you're authorized to use that power. Amen. And so um, continuing on, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then what's that other what's that say right there? Now, I know that these are tough times, but you it's going to be, you know, you got to start taking on this stuff by faith and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What about? Hurricanes and what about everything else? What what's that say? You know what they've been saying about California, right? They said we're gonna uh, break off and uh, disintegrate into the ocean or something like that. And then what they said? Uh, but nothing shall by any means hurt you. That, I mean, you know, you can believe stuff like this or not, but I choose to believe it. Amen. And so I'm able to say, oh, it ain't gonna touch me. Oh man, they shooting out there, not me. Y'all in here with me. 
They, they might be shooting, but they're not shooting at me. You might get hit with a stray. A, a stray bullet ain't allowed to hit me. Oh, come on, see? Now, now let me, I, I have to always preface things and put an asterisk because we, we live in a world where, oh, man, well, bad things happen. Listen, I'm not explaining everybody's situation. I'm teaching you how to make yours go right. Amen? Listen, that's what I'm doing in here. I'm not trying to explain why something happened to somebody else. I'm showing you what you need to do so that it don't happen to you. Amen? And so nothing shall by any means hurt you. So what's going to hurt you? I mean, like, if we really just believe this simple truth. Now, where did I get this power? I got it from Jesus. Oh, yeah, pastor, but, you know, all these flus are going around, all these. What's it? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, when people tell you stuff is going around, saying it's going right on around me, it ain't stopping on me. Amen. And you got to believe this because if you believe it, you'll be able to live it. And so we need to receive and be confident in this authority. We need to receive and be confident in this authority so we can stand boldly against the wiles of the devil. Amen. How I many know the devil is wilding out? Huh? You know what's crazy is the devil is wilding out and the church is still preaching on grace. Like what? The devil is wilding out. People are are being sniped and taken out and families are being destroyed and, and kids are being manipulated and twisted in their minds and, and all this type of stuff. And the church is still talking about grace. Really? I mean, grace for what? We need to learn about some power. We need to learn that, oh no, my kid ain't about to turn out like that in the name of Jesus. I bind you, devil. I forbid you from influencing my child. Yes. But see, the Christian folks are not confident in who they are, and so they don't stand up to nothing. Amen. I'm going to show you. I, I give you this truth, so you know, I try to simplify it way down. But if you don't take a stand, I say, man, I just gave you. A, a sawed off shotgun and I gave you a license and permission to use it. Somebody kick your door down and you standing there shaking. You better blah, blah. <laughs> Shouldn't have came up in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to just, but, but, but see, think about it. How many Times as the devil try to pop his head in there, he'll, you know, he'd do something. But a lot of times people, what do they do? They go praying to God, which is good. But how many know you got to advance? You say, well, Lord, I'm just, can you help me? over? Bind that devil. Come on, cast him out. Tell that devil where to go. Get the, come on, get that devil off your body. Get that devil out your money. Huh? All this from, we're talking about Luke 10, 19. That's just basic, simple truth. And there's so much more. But we've got to receive. Look at your name and say, you got to receive this. Okay, so if I tell you, this is what the Bible said. You got all this power. You got Jesus. You got all this power. What you got to do? Just receive. Say, okay. All right, then. I don't understand it. I don't feel like I got that kind of power. But, you know, we're not teaching about no feelings. We teach them about the truth. But when you got power and you don't use it, how are you going to benefit? Right. Amen. You understand that the devil could see all that power in you and still lay in your living room until you tell him to leave. And then he'll invite some friends. Hey, look, they ain't saying nothing. Come over. Let's just see what happens. And you up in there got all that power. Just full of the Holy Ghost, full of power, but you won't say nothing. Mm -hmm. hmm? Now I'm going to show you how, you know, we, we can we can start calling some things out, but we got to be prepared. How many know before you go into anything, you always got to be prepared. Go to Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 10. You know, and this is this is where we become armed and dangerous. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stop right there. Why do you need a shield? Why do you need armor? Because there's an attack. If there's no attack, it's just like in a football game. You know, flag football, they don't wear helmets. How come they don't wear helmets in flag football? Because they're grabbing a the flag, they're not coming to... But when you get in the game, a real football, they put their helmet on. Why? Because somebody coming. Well, I don't know. They, they, they may not try to hit me, step on the field. Step on the field. They coming. Amen. Well, that's what it is for us. It's coming. It's not about, am I going to be attacked by the enemy? Oh, he going to come. See, the, the issue is not, oh, I just want to live this life to where I'm not attacked. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't want you to think you're never going to get attacked. Fiery darts will be shot, but you need to learn how to take them and break them. Y'all, come on. That's what I'm trying to teach you. That's why I teach the way I teach up in here. See, I don't give the devil so much of my attention. Oh, the devil's attacking. He's this and he's that. Oh, that's what he's supposed to do. He's a devil. But if he shoots a fiery dart, shouldn't have shot that one because I'm going to keep it and I'm going to break it. And now you just told me where you are. So guess what? I'm not waiting for your next dart. I'm about to deal with you. What have you dealt with stuff like that? Now, you may say, Pastor, I'm just not like so, man, I'm just not so spiritually astute. But I'm going to show you through the word tonight. Your instructions were given and it had nothing to do with you being spiritually astute. It had nothing to do with you going to some classes to learn how to cast out devils. It had everything to do with you becoming a believer. A believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me continue. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Next verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's one thing you got to learn right away. Don't get mad at people. Don't get mad at, you know, stuff. And don't be mad at Mother Nature. I mean, there ain't no Mother Nature. Amen. Don't be talking about, well, you know, that's, the, that's God. That's God doing them weather things. And, come on. Because if that was the case, Jesus would have never told that storm, peace be still. He would have just said, guys, hold on. This is the will of God. No, that did not come from God. I'm going to show you the stuff. We got to make it clear. We know this did not come from God. Well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Where? OK, so this lets you know that this is hierarchy. And so now think about this. If your enemy has rank and file. But you're still trying to, you know, convince your friends that drinking ain't that bad. Like your enemy got rank and file, man. I mean, he got, you know, there's demons that are assigned territories. They're given lands and territories and they're told to, you know what I'm saying? Strong, demonic strong men. But if we just talking about, well, you know. A pastor, he's always preaching against sin, so I'm sometimes I just feel it's too pressuring. At what point you want to rise up and say, man, teach me something that can help me. I mean, I'm trying to get some victory up in here, man. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm trying to tell you guys stuff, man, that works. I don't, I don't know devils all just flying through my house and just I'm up in the house just nervous and shaking. I don't know what's going on. Man, you see what I'm saying? You don't have to live like that. But you got to recognize, OK, I'm not battling against flesh and blood. I don't need to be paying too much attention to people. I need to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So spiritual wickedness in high places. So uh, next verse. Wherefore, since see, since you're in the game, that's what wherefore means. So since you're not playing flag football. Y'all in here with me. Since you're not in the flag league no more. You might need to get you a helmet. Yeah. Right, because if you don't, you're going to get hurt. Amen. And so wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day of evil. 
Oh, some people think in the day of evil, that must be in the last day. Mm -mm. How do you know where in the day of evil is? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then verse 34 says, more or less sufficient unto today yes. is the evil thereof. So basically he's telling you, don't worry about tomorrow because you got enough evil to worry about today. So that you may be able to withstand in the day of evil. When is the day of evil? Today. And when's going to be the next day of evil? Tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? You understand what we're in? Yeah, no, I'm pushing this off to the end time. No, -uh, it's right now. Amen. And then he says, and having done all to stand. Next verse. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Man, you still got Christians today that don't read their Bible every day. Yeah. Well, you know why? They don't know what kind of battle they in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how many know you get beat up enough, you become numb to it? Yeah. All y'all in here with me. You get beat up enough, you become numb to it. You think taking them whoopings is normal. That's not the way God wants you to live. But you got to be willing to do what is necessary so that you can win. Stand therefore having your loins good or bow with truth. That's the word of God. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. How many know God will help you stand in that place of righteousness? Now I'm going to teach you as I'm teaching through this. See that righteousness will bring a boldness, right? Amen. Proverbs 28, 1. The righteous are as bold as a lion. But the wicked, they flee when no man pursues. A lot of times people aren't bold. That's why they keep teaching all this grace and all this type of stuff. Come over here, man. We got a coffee bar. And they keep inviting, you know, they're letting everybody come in there. Ain't nobody got no power. Ain't nobody casting out nothing. They ain't casting out nothing. You see what I'm saying? And then you mess around and go over there and pray over them. They look at you like, wow. Oh, what? what whoa. What was that? <laughs> That's supposed to be normal. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to show you that this is for believers. This ain't for no special, you know. But why do you think they're watering down things at these churches? I believe someone's behind it. And his name is Satan. Amen. 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 And so stand there for having your learns girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. How many know when you could stand flat footed on the word of God? Come on. How many know when you can double dog dare? I dare you to come up in. Oh, see y'all. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Y'all not ready. When you standing flat footed on the word of God, you're talking about I dare you to come up in here. Amen. Amen. But when you don't when you're not standing firm on the word like that. You don't want no conflict. You don't want that. But what you going to do? Be whooped on. Then we just go around this cycle. You know what I'm saying? And, and this cycle of defeat. But God can give you long life. He can give you a lasting victory. He can give you, come on. Man, you got enough power to bring peace to your block. Yes. But you won't do stuff. If you don't have confidence in who you are, you won't engage in spiritual matters. You see what I'm saying? But God, uh, you understand who you are. God will tell you, oh, go get the oil. Yeah. Just like me and my wife. We, we went out there, man, and we forgot everybody got those ring cameras these days. <laughs> <laughs> but we were out there, man. I'm talking about, you know, olive oil, just big gallon. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, just pouring it all over. And I'm getting all on y'all's sidewalk because, you know, we had some. Neighbors that was kind of getting loud and, you know, doing some stuff. Get out there with that oil, man. Then you stand on the word. You know, you can do something like that, but then you can stand on the word. Isaiah 32, 18. He says that my people shall, in the NIV, says my people shall live in peaceful dwelling places. Yeah, and secure homes right. and places of rest. You know, things like that. So you can claim that. Say, well, that's what's going on on my block because of this word. But if you're not confident, I sure hope they be quiet. That ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, my, that oil must have stained that. I had, my street was stained, my sidewalk was stained, everything was stained for the longest. We like, dang, I, went a little, I got a little heavy handed. <laughs> but how I many know the neighborhood is quiet now? Huh? What? So how do these things change? We got to be able to engage in spiritual things. But then you got to have the word. See, if you're standing flat-footed on the word, then you know. Amen. Can you put that up there real quick? Isaiah 32, 18. 32, 18 in the NIV. So some of y'all need to claim this for your neighborhood. Amen. So, and when we'll get back to this Ephesians. I'm just teaching you stuff, man, that's, you know, you're probably not going to hear it at every church, and it's sometimes challenging, but you're going to do more celebrating than crying. Yes. Guarantee you that. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in what? So isn't that something you can stand on? So, no, I'm going to claim that scripture right there. See, that's all you got to do. Whenever you got a problem, get the word on it. Let me get a promise. Okay, I'm going to stand on the promise, but then I'm going to listen. What's the Holy Ghost going to tell me to do? Now, I'm always preaching against sin because I'll show you in a minute. That, that's a waste of time. That keeps you out of all this power. That's how you keep taking your helmet off all the time. And, and, and now you're dealing with unnecessary injuries. You're wasting time. But if you can just get that part right and just start running the way God wants you to run, then boom, he'll start helping you to, you know, activate spiritual power. And, and, and I mean, we, we didn't use this stuff, man. You know, you start speaking into somebody's spirit, your boss is acting up. Man, you talk to that person in the spirit. You start to dominate them. You start changing stuff, man. And, and I mean, you can change. How many? That's too. I don't want to get into all that. You can change rules, man. Change people's minds. All kind of stuff. See, there's so much more that God wants us to get into instead of, you know, you being forgiven again and again and again. Move on. Advance. There's greater things. Now let's go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter uh, 6. So this is just about you knowing what Jesus gave you. Ephesians chapter uh, yeah, 6, and then we was, I forgot which verse we were. 11? Oh, 15? Okay. Put on the whole armor, God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me see. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Okay, we already read all that. Keep going. And, and now we're talking about standing on the word, on the word of God. Next verse. Above all, now, we stick with that verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Think about this. The shield of faith is up. The devil shoots a fiery dart. He tries to tell you you're sick. It's a fiery dart. But then he says that you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And so what does that mean? I got too much faith for healing to be sick. And so guess what? That fiery dart just got captured. Y'all in here with me. Because your faith is going to have you living in such a way where every fiery dart of the enemy cannot work because your faith is too strong. You see what I'm saying? That's the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Quench meaning take in the fire or the power out. Next verse. He says, and take the helmet. There it is. Take the helmet of salvation. See, everything's hinging on salvation. Take the helmet of salvation and then what? And the sword of the spirit, which is what? Okay, so some people get saved, but they don't get the word. How I many know oh, you just got dropped off in a war with no weapon? So what you going to do? You're going to be victimized. Amen. Oh, you saved and you might get to heaven. But man, you took a mean whooping before you got there. Say, man, you got beat. <laughs> How many of y'all want to 
get whooped on and rescued to heaven or y'all want to just step up in there where God says, OK, man, you didn't <laughs> your fight is finished. You've done enough. Come on up. How many of y'all ready to come on up with your head held high? You want to come up? Come on. How many of y'all want to get caught up standing in that position of power? You want to get rescued in the fetal position? You coming yet, Lord? Oh, come on, Lord. Jesus, come, come tonight. <laughs> or you want to be like, you know, God calls you up and you was just like slaying them. <sighs> and you just out of here. See, that's what you want to do. Occupy till he comes. That's why I keep preaching the way I preach, because Jesus is not coming back for a broke down church. He surely ain't coming back. And the devil's just been having us in a chokehold. And we got to just get rescued out of here. Man, he, that's not how he's coming. He's not going to come back. We're going to be, man, called up. But we are warriors. But it takes truth. To get you to that warrior status. Amen? Amen. So take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Next verse. Praying always. How, how long are you supposed to pray? Okay, so hold on. What is this? Pastor, I can't be praying always. See, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you guys on Sunday to live from your spirit. Your spirit is a real you that's connected to God. How many, have you guys ever experienced like some type of communication with God where you felt like, he told you some or or sometimes people say, man, some told me to check that. Y'all know him with me? Uh, some told me that I should check this or some told me to go down this street or some told me that's the spirit of God. Well, you got that connection. Well, do you think that that connection with your spirit is only turned on by you? Oh, come on. I'm trying to help you. You think it's only turned on by you because, you know, you decided to do a little devotion. No. <laughs> that little devotion is in your mind. Right. But your spirit is connected to God. So how many know he'll talk to you in your sleep? Oh, come on. Some of y'all. He talked to you in your sleep. He'll talk to you. You'll be, you know, in the shower. Yeah. You are not trying to have no devotion. <laughs> and God started dropping it on you in the shower. Come on. See, that's why some people want to stay away. They don't want to get that close to God because they're not trying to talk to God right now. And that's why it says praying always because it's constant. This thing don't turn off. And you know what? God is so powerful that he can give you a rhema word, a revelation, something that will change your life right in the middle of you doing something else. Right. You could be busy at work. And God will give you like a download that's amazing. Amen. And people, they spend their time, you know, I'm just trying to search for him. God's like, why are you going anywhere? I'm in you. <laughs> so we really don't have to go nowhere. You know what I mean? You just open yourself up. Well, that's what it means, praying always. Now, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. See, now. As you advance in your walk with God, God will just be, man, he'll be touching you and, and you'll just be, you start talking back to God. And then sometimes, you know, you just open yourself up and God will start having you flow in tongues. And you just be in the car and you just, and you just start speaking in tongues. See, tongues is not for us to be out here standing up so somebody knows and somebody can look at you and say, man, you're powerful. It's a communication between you and God. But it's not limited. It's not hindered. Amen. You know, you could be in the midst of getting ready to do something and boom, speaking in tongues. So this is that higher level of spiritual living and watching there into with all perseverance and supplication. Um, for all saints. And so that's be praying for everybody. And that's why I've been sharing with you. And so when you start to understand this, you're like, OK, I got the armor of God. Now I will give you this as an asterisk. Take that and let that be one of the scriptures you meditate, those, those eight verses or so, eight or nine or whatever it was. And look at yourself as, I'm getting dressed. What are you getting dressed for? The battle. The day of evil, that's what it talked about. Oh, well, when's the day of evil? The last day? No. Matthew 6, 34. Sufficient unto today is the evil thereof. So it's today. So you got to be ready today. So put on the armor today. Okay, 
And so now you'll be armed and dangerous. Now, I want to encourage you and let you know we can never doubt who we are. Man, the enemy's really working on that identity. We can never doubt who we are and the power we possess. Now, some of you might feel like, well, I don't have that much power because I... I've only been with God for a short time. Well, it don't, you don't have to be with him that long. You see what I'm saying? This is not the way. Now, you should be learning and growing, but you know what? You get more the more you do. So the more you just dive into this, and even if you feel unqualified, say, oh, Lord, just use me. I don't know what I'm doing, but just use me. And those are the most powerful people. Amen. The ones that are waiting and trying to study it out and trying to figure out God, they never do nothing. And they just stay smart and powerless. But the ones that are just dumb, we don't know nothing. We just all just say, I'm out here, Lord, what are we doing? Amen. Come on. Some of y'all used to be like, well, no. Nah. Well, maybe a couple of, you know, when we wasn't saved, you know what I'm saying? You didn't know what, you didn't know how it was all going to turn out, but you're like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you just get in there, man, we're going to figure this out later. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just gung-ho. Well, God wants us to be like that. So we can never doubt who we are and the power we possess. Go to 1 Peter. And this is important now. You don't want to doubt this because... You got some problems. The devil's looking. So he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. What is an adversary? That's your enemy. Oh, no, Pastor, I, you know, I really don't have too many problems, you know what I mean? Just living a peaceful life. No, let me tell you, there is a devil who is looking to kill you and your whole family. He wants to take all of you out. In whatever way he can. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Now, I just quoted a scripture in Proverbs 28 1 the righteous are as bold as a lion. Well, we know Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but what is the devil? A copycat, a counterfeit. So here he is as a roaring, but you know what? He don't even have no teeth. <laughs> He run around here trying to roar and he got no teeth. Amen. And got people running from him and he can't hurt anybody. All he can do is trick you to hurt yourself. Amen. And so the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. A lot of times people get weary because they're going through something. Listen, you're not the first one to go through that. Whatever your situation is, believe me, there's believers around the world that's dealing with the same thing. And there are people who have dealt with it before you and they beat it. And they overcame it. Amen. And now let's look at this in the... Um, what do we have here? NLT. In the NLT, he says, uh, praise the Lord, stay alert. Here go Pastor Troy again. Oh, man, it's just Wednesday. We're just trying to stay alert. Why? He says, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Okay, so here's what happens is we have to stand firm against him. Now, he's looking for someone he can devour. Now, I know I'm, I'm you know, having fun with it, I know to me, he has no teeth, but to somebody who ain't living for God, they get victimized. Y'all in here with me? Because how many know those lions that were in that lion's den when they threw Daniel in there? 
when it came to Daniel, they couldn't bite him. But how many know those lions, it wasn't that they had no teeth and they were not hungry, but when it came to Daniel, they had no power. But when Daniel got pulled up out of there and the king threw the other people in there, how many know they ate them? And so the devil will get a hold of some folks. Oh, yeah, come on. He will get a hold of some folks, but he is seeking whom he may devour. And we've got to be in that place where we shut the door on it, where it's clear. Oh, he comes looking. Oh, not that one. Let me go on down the street. Amen. Come on, y'all. Back in the day, you know, some people, they want to start trouble. And then, they, uh, mm, you know, how come you didn't pick no fight with him? Went on down to someone else. Right. And so he says. We are to stand firm against them. So we stand firm against them and we got to be strong in our faith. Now, we need to, man, listen, I want you to be in that place where you stand against everything that's coming from the devil. Let's not be confused. Stand for. I try to tell people this when that COVID thing was hitting. I said, man, stand against it. It's from hell. Ah, go, go hard against it. Don't. And man, people was looking at me like I was crazy. They thought I was crazy. Because that dude was saying that, that's just, you know what I'm saying? It ain't that serious. To me, it was. Now, I want you to quickly recognize what's coming from God and what's coming from the devil. And now you receive the things that come from God and you reject the things that come from the devil. Amen. And so, how I many know oh, we need to stand firm against storms? Yes. See, some of y'all, now, listen, some of y'all might be talking that Mother Nature stuff and weather patterns and global warning or warming or whatever they're calling it, but I guarantee you them people in Florida that they need some help. They don't need nobody talking about global warming. They need to have somebody standing against this. Y'all in here with me. Because to them, all the scientific reasons don't mean nothing. They need help. Well, if we understand that's coming from the devil. Oh, see, now this this gets out there where we just make it clear. And I'm going to show you in the word, but we need to stand firm against storms. I mean, no, we need to stand against sickness. You can't let people tell you that that sickness came from God. God gave me that sickness and God's trying to do something with me through. That ain't from God. Y'all in here with me. Everything from God is good. God is about life. He's not about death. It's not about people dying. And he's not about people being murdered. And he's not about all of that. He's about life. He's about people living. But if, if we're vacillating and we cannot establish where it's coming from, then if you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know whether to reject it or receive it. Huh? If, if, if something comes to you, it comes to your house, if you think maybe it came from God, you're likely to receive it. But if you understand, come on, if the devil showed up, horns and all, <laughs> at your door and gave you a package, how many know y'all would, you, some of y'all don't know, I wonder what it is. You wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You would reject that with the quickness. Why? Because you know it came from the devil. Well, you got to learn how to recognize that in the spirit. Man, you could feel something in your physical body. And you could be like, I wonder where. You better think of them horns. Think of them horns and think of that package. Now, if you reject it, oh, no, that didn't come from God. Oh, see, that's a different way of living, though. A oh, pastor, well, we just, we're just normal people. Says who? God never called you normal. He said you're peculiar. He told you to put on the full armor of God. He told you that you're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. He told you that sufficient is uh, the evil of today. That's what God said. The world says we normal. 
I just want to go to church, have a little sweet time. That's what the world said. I like it over there because, you know, they got a nice uh, praise team and the band is really good. And But how are you living at the house? What do you mean, Pastor? Yeah, I'm talking about that whooping you was taking. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't, want to, you don't want me to know about it. God gives me, and in, in, I know who's getting whooped on and beat on at the house. Y'all yeah. think I don't know. You're taking lumps at the crib. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's why I preach this stuff. Amen. I ain't preaching this because I'm taking lumps at the crib. I know. I know what's going on. And I try to help people. Because what's the point? You got you to gotta, you gotta get tired of getting whooped on, man. And start establishing some, some stuff here. And so we need to stand against lack. How I many know lack ain't from God? Come on, you got a shortage. You coming up short or something. You talking about, well, the Lord's trying to teach me something. Oh, please. He ain't trying to teach you nothing. That's the devil jacking your stuff, man. Or you just giving it away because you won't tithe. That's what I'm saying. I got to teach all this stuff. This is practical teaching. I didn't, um, Pastor, it just seemed like my money, just, I got a hole in my pocket. You do. All your pockets got a hole in it. See? But if we just obey God, we do what he says. He got... <laughs> I can't go without it. God would be violating his word. God would be a flat out liar. And he's not a man that he would lie. Neither the son of man that he will repent. Numbers 23, 19. Y'all in here with me. And so, how I many know we got to stand against oppression? We got to stand against depression? You know what I'm saying? You, you think that depression is coming from God? What is the depression is coming from like uh, worry, anxiety, then it gets, turns into confusion and it turns into all this stuff and it's weights and pressure. But the Bible says, cast your care upon him for he cares for you. So how can we say all this depression, all this anxiety, all this stuff is from God? Well, if you think it's from God, you're likely to deal with it. But if you could just see those horns and you can see that envelope, then you realize where it came from. It did not come from God. Amen. And so if it does not come from God, you need to reject it. So we need to quickly recognize what comes from God and what comes from the devil. Look at your name and say, I would like to know that. And I, I would like to. I would, that's some. Good information I'd like to have. Amen. It's not very complicated. Go to John. John 10, 10. So the thief, who do you think that is? The devil. the devil. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Okay. So if it falls in that category, stealing, how many know sickness steals your health? Um destroy I mean all kind of stuff people's bodies falling apart people's money falling apart all this type of stuff it's coming from the devil because that's what he does he has come to steal kill and to destroy can nobody say it was God that caused a tornado to wipe out somebody's whole house and all their belongings and everything that's God that ain't him he says, I am, now who's this? This is Jesus. I am come that they may have life. And how are you supposed to have life? Just one day in heaven? No, more abundantly. So where is sickness in more abundantly? Where is lack in more abundantly? Where is fear, where is depression in more abundantly? It's not there. And so it did not come from God. It came from the devil. Amen. And so if it's not part of more abundantly, that's all you got to do. Find out what it is. You get a bill out of nowhere. If it's not part of more abundantly, 
Reject it. Hey, just because you get a bill don't mean that you really owe it. Y'all, see, I'm trying. I got so much I want to teach the church. I got so much, so many things that, you know, God can empower you. Now, the reason that it go, we go slow with a lot of this is you can't do it if you're not obedient. It won't work. So you can't be getting no bill talking about, I reject this. Oh, no, this has got to be wrong. You can't do that if you're not obedient. Right. Amen. But if you're obedient, stuff starts changing. Right. It's just, it's, you know, amounts that was old gets changed and all. It's all kind of stuff that God will do for you. Right. But if it's not part of life more abundantly, then it didn't come from God. And if it didn't come from God, what are you supposed to do? Stand against it. Yeah. Another word for that is reject it. Reject it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And how do you reject it? You re reject it in your faith. Now, you may say, well, when, ah, man, I sure would love to get to that place, Pastor. That seems like such a, an advanced place. Well, let's see when this was supposed to start. Go to Mark. Mark 16. Now, see, you're going to realize a lot of us have been making a bunch of excuses. Because, what does he say? This is the Great Commission, which all of us should be well aware of if you get saved. He says... And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Some of you say, I'm not a preacher. He didn't say it for preachers only. It's everybody. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Next verse. And these signs shall follow them that go to word of life. Is that what it says? These signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Isn't that what we talk about? Like you got to believe in God and all that? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Isn't that what Peter let them know in Acts chapter 4? When they said, how did you get this man his healing? In the name of Jesus. What power and authority are you rolling with or in? In the name of Jesus. So he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall, what? Who is this? Somebody who went to school of leaders or demonology 101? <laughs> Any of that? So does this just mean like a regular person, like a believer? Yeah. Like if somebody says, I believe you, Jesus. I receive you as my Savior. They can cast out devils? Then how come devils is living with Christians? Huh? Why? Because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, the devil tricked you and he let you know you don't have enough power to cast me out. But my job is to make you well aware of the truth. You had it. When did you get it? First day you gave your heart to Jesus. The first day. Dang, really? You got it the very first day. But the problem is there's bad teaching. And so basically when you first get saved, you step right into power and then you get taught out of power. Come on. You first get saved, you step right into power. And then you keep going to church and you get taught out of power. And that's why we got so many problems. I mean, uh, over here, you're about to get your power back. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying, over here, you're going to get your power back. So, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. What does this mean? This means you can't be poisoned. Amen. I've been saying this for, man, you can't be poisoned and you can't be killed. You know what I'm saying? Until it's your time to go, you're going to still be here. So don't be worrying about, oh, man, I don't know if I can eat that. Don't be. Listen, especially if you go on a mission trip. Because, you know, you offend people. If you don't eat, they take it personal. They're like, you, you know, you're talking about, I'm, I'm good. I'm, oh, I ate earlier. No. That's an, a service, man. They want to serve you. So if you don't eat their food, they will be offended. 
But if you know you can't be poisoned, go ahead and eat it. See what I'm saying? You, you, you want to eliminate all possible fear. And so, uh, as we, we're going to close in a minute, but casting out devils, what does that mean? This is stripping the devil of his influence, taking away his power. See, and that's what you would do. You cast out the devil. Now, you have to be confident to do this. Amen? You have to be confident to do this. But before confidence can be developed, you must be obedient. Every one of my messages comes all the way back down to that. It always comes to that. Before you can be confident, you must, uh, excuse me, before your confidence can be developed, you must be obedient. Now, disobedience causes passivity in the spirit. Disobedience causes passivity in the spirit. So you're disobedient, so you're not saying nothing to no devil. You ain't doing nothing because you know you're living wrong. And this is why the grace message is so popular. The enemy knows that without obedience, you will never rise to your position of dominance. No other way. And I'll tell you something else disobedience does. It impairs judgment. And so you make bad decisions. Because you have disobedience. Now, what do you have to do to correct disobedience? Just repent. Amen. Lord, I've been messing up. Forgive me. Here I am. Just do whatever you want to do. I'm going to follow you. Now you can receive power. And let's close with this. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, King James. And such as do wickedly against the covenant. That's why I'm pre I have to preach against sin. Because if I don't, nobody has any power. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by what? Flatteries. And what do you get? The devil will always send somebody to flatter you. They'll send somebody to appease. You know, that's why you go to some churches. It really goes well with your flesh. It just clicks. It just, I feel that. It goes well with your flesh and your soul. Your spirit is starving, though. And so, as such they do wicked, uh, wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by flatteries. But the people that know their God, look at your neighbor and say, that's me. I know my God. Man, I'm, man, I'm not lost. I know my God. The people that know their God shall be strong. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm strong. Man, because I know my God. Amen. See, the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. What? They shall do exploits. And that word exploits means striking or notable deeds, uh, spirited or heroic acts. How many know we are doing amazing things in the earth because we know our God? We're not going to be wasting time violating the covenant, but we're going to be doing exploits. And the world will be standing in awe. And the world will be amazed. You know, that's why people like Smith Wigglesworth would do crazy stuff. Like commanding dead people to come back. He had to have a high level of confidence. You know what I'm saying? He had to have a, I remember one story, they said that one man died. And then they was over there comforting his wife. And then here comes Smith. And Smith's wife was over there. She, she, don't do it, Smith. Oh, don't do it. But he said he wouldn't listen to me when he was alive. So he's going to listen to me now that he's dead. <laughs> Went upstairs and snatched that man off the bed. Get up. And he came back to life. My people shall do exploits. How many of y'all ready to do some great things? Now, Listen, yeah, clap for the Lord. But you got to be confident. You got to know now, this is not me. This is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, as, as we get ready to leave, don't feel condemned. If you are in a place in your life where you're like, man, I feel like, oh, man, I just got this. I don't want to let go. I'm just man. Oh, just go to God. I, I guarantee if you ask him for help, he'll help you. But see, you got to get those things together.
That way you can start walking as more than a conqueror. Amen. And you can start living as more than a conqueror. And then now, like I said earlier, you're going to spend a lot, of more, lot more of your time in joy than in sadness and sorrow. Yeah. Amen? Because you will be overcoming the devil daily. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the word of our testimony. And we're going to be testifying about his goodness. Give the Lord one more hand clap tonight. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for meeting us here tonight. Thank you for your word and the power of your truth. Lord, we submit ourselves to it. Lord, we expect great things. As a matter of fact, Lord, we make ourselves available for those exploits that you talked about. Lord, we want to do great things in the earth. We want the world to know that you're still alive. You're still full of power, that you're still a, a loving God, a forgiving God, a cleansing God, and you anoint us to go forth into this world. We have an assignment to complete, and we will be faithful, Lord, to see it out to the end. I pray right now, if you're watching us and you don't know Jesus as Lord, we want you to take that first step. Take that step of receiving him as your master. Just come on into the family because God's arms are open for you. He loves you, but he can't force you to come in. So church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to walk right out of here. And I'm telling you, man, I just expect victory. Because we are believers, right? Remember that acronym they had? Uh, what did it say? Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. I think Darlene Bishop or somebody like that had that. But just be a believer and expect victory every day in your life. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you. As we leave tonight, we ask that you go with us. And we ask that you continue to minister to us in a very personal way. We ask, Lord, also that you would continue to surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen.